Simpson or Rorock? Let's roll that intro and figure it out. Make the call. Hard work, work. Hanging on the doors in the morning. Hard work, work. Get up and let's go to work. Hard work. What is going on? This is Motorstar signing in. Thank you for tuning in to one of my videos. Today, we're going to be battling the Simpson Outlaw Bandit versus the Rorock Atlas Core. You know, I've had both of these helmets for over a year, year and a half, and I've done some review videos of both of these helmets. You could check them up. I'll link them in the description of this video. But today we're going to battle the Simpson Outlaw Bandit versus the Rorock Atlas Core, kind of a little versus video to kind of help you guys out if you're out there looking at getting a helmet in 2021. Now keep in mind, this video is not sponsored. So Simpson nor Rorock is kicking me any bit of cash. I just am doing this for you guys out there that are really looking to, you know, add one of these helmets to your setup and hopefully you know this video may lead you one way or the other if you're kind of on the fence both of them are extremely hard to find somewhere in order to try on yourself so i will kind of give you my tidbits of advice leading one way or the other but before we get into the actual versus portion of today's video i want to discuss some of the tech specs of each one of these helmets now first we're going to talk about the rurok atlas core which we have right here as you guys can see this is the 1.0 right so everything i'm going to talk to you about is with the 2.0 setup so keep that in mind i do have the 1.0 there's a little bit of slight changes to the 2.0 which i will talk about but this helmet's going to run you about 450 dollars now with the rurok you get both lenses which we'll touch on a little bit later some of the other features to this helmet is you know that fit lock system here which allows you to put this helmet on and take it off relatively easy you're not going to be that guy in the group fumbling with the d-ring before you guys head on out on a ride you'll probably be the first one done and waiting on all your buddies to put on their helmet now this helmet is also dot and ece rated as you guys could hopefully let's see if the camera will pick that up because i'm trying out this new setup i'm actually recording this video guys on my iphone 12 pro max and i have a new app that i stumbled across from matt hapaya it's called pro tape check it out i'll throw it in the description too really just kind of trying to test out what this phone is capable of doing so we'll see how it goes but yeah so it's it's dot and ec rated some of the other features that rurock puts on their website is talking about this aerospace grade t300 carbon fiber which makes this helmet extremely lightweight guys like super lightweight we'll get into the actual weights of these helmets a little bit later in the video so stay tuned don't go anywhere yet we're just getting started and one other thing about this helmet is these visors are your anti-scratch, anti-fog coated lenses. So it's going to kind of hold up in the environments and two, it's not going to chip or scratch relatively easily. Now, that's enough of the Rorock as far as tech specs. If you guys are following this channel trying to get tech spec videos, you're on the wrong channel, guys, because I'm not much for that. I do a little bit of research, but a lot of the times I lean on YouTube to learn what to buy myself and I want this channel to be more of like the rider's perspective or you know straight from you know someone that's actually worn the helmet as opposed to reading something online but Rurock does a great job on their website kind of laying it out there for you so you know what you're getting in the helmet so check out their website if you're interested in the Rurock. Now for the Simpson this helmet was the first helmet I bought that was a full face helmet for my Harley Davidson Dino Fat Bob. I actually picked it up from my buddy who runs the Harley Davidson dealer out there in Tuscaloosa, Alabama called T-Town Harley Davidson. They're the only Harley Davidson dealership in Alabama that stocks Simpson. So if you're kind of in that Alabama area and you're looking to try on a Simpson, hit up T-Town. My buddy Josh, let him know I sent you. I don't get anything from it, but still, that way I feel cool. And uh, go check it out. But this helmet, I really enjoy this helmet. It comes in at about $449.95 on Simpson's website. But some of the other features of the Simpson Outlaw Bandit is that it's DOT and Snell rated. So I don't know the big difference between the two, but I do know because I reached out to Simpson and I don't know if you guys have seen the new helmet that I have on the channel, the Simpson Ghost Bandit. And I was wondering why like the Ghost is ECE rated as opposed to the the Outlaw is Snell. And looking at the helmet, the Ghost seems like it's much more helmet for your money but it costs about the same and part of that is because of the rating of the helmet so i would venture to say that the snell rating is a little bit safer but i don't know if you guys know the difference between the two let me know in the comments below kind of educate me a bit but the simpson outlaw bandit is dot and snell rated which yeah cool 
And another feature that Simpson talks about on their website is talking about these vents, right? With the Simpson Outlaw Bandit, these vents are not closable at all, right? So they're gonna be allowing air to come into this helmet whether you want it to or not. But, you know, they, they keep me cool during the summer months and they don't let too much air in during the winter months that, you know, my face is getting any colder than it normally does anyways. And last but not least, Simpson claims that there is some sort of anti-lift designed to the helmet to kind of keep it sucked down on your head when you're traveling at legal higher rates of speed on your dyno. But we'll get into that a little bit later as if that actually works or not. So that's enough with the tech specs. Let's dig in to this battle between the Simpson Outlaw Bandit and my Rurock Atlas Core. And we're gonna be utilizing the 2.0. Remember, this is the 1.0, but we're going off of the 2.0 versus the Simpson Outlaw Bandit. So we're gonna break this contest down into seven categories. Yes, seven. So a lot, but I wanted to kind of touch on a little bit here and there. We're gonna talk about price. We're gonna talk about safety, comfort, the weight of each helmet, your visor mechanism and replacements, how easy that is, you know, between which helmet. Mounting a Bluetooth communicator, because that's important nowadays. You know, we all still wanna get out there and get away, kind of let loose, get away from society and everything. But a person like myself, you know, I'm, I have five kids, so I don't wanna ever be on the dining and not be reachable in case something were to happen to any one of my family members. So we're gonna talk about, you know, mounting a Bluetooth communicator to each one of these helmets. And then last but not least, we are gonna discuss the noise level as well as the aerodynamics of each helmet when you're traveling, whether it's through the city or on interstate long distance rides. So first, as far as the price goes, both helmets are about $450. Simpson tries to, you know, put on that good poker face and put listed at $449.95, but both of these helmets are $450. However, with your Rurock Atlas, you're getting two visors. Yes, you're getting a clear and dark smoked visor. As opposed to the Simpson, you're just getting one clear visor. So with that being said, both helmets are about $450. You get two visors for the Rurock. I will give this point to Rurock for giving you an additional visor to get out there on the road. All right, so next, it's gonna be safety. Now, both of these helmets are, like I said, they're gonna protect your dome in the event of an accident. However, the Simpson Outlaw Bandit is DOT and Snell rated. Now, from the research I have done, and I could be wrong, guys, but I would venture to believe that Snell rating is a little bit higher than your ECE rating. So I'm gonna give this point to the Simpson Outlaw Bandit for the safety rating that this helmet has. Now these next two categories, I could probably have put these together. However, I did want to separate these two because we're talking about our comfort and weight. Now, you know, a lighter helmet is going to make you believe that it's going to be more comfortable. However, we're going to be looking at the comfort of each helmet based off of the internal guts of the helmet. So the padding, how everything feels. Now I did say I wear a seven and a quarter inch hat and both of these helmets are size medium. So they should fit about the same, right? Yeah. However, I will say with the Simpson Outlaw Bandit, it does feel more comfortable to me. The pads feel more plush, kind of like, you know, that pillow that you've been looking to purchase online and you just haven't wanted to spend the money on it. That's what the Simpson pads feel like. It's just nice and comfortable on your cheeks, no hot spots in the head. But with the Rurock, I will say I've had some weird hot spots or areas that kind of get tender during a longer ride. Right above the top of my head where my hair meets my forehead, which I do have a large forehead, guys, so could just be my head shape. But also, too, my ears feel like they're protruding out and hitting the insides of the helmet. I don't know if that's, again, you know, my setup or what, but I will say the comfort of the helmet, I will give the point to the Simpson Outlaw Bandit because the pads feel like they're better designed to give you that comfort feel. You definitely feel like you're putting on something that's $450, in my opinion, with the Simpson. So, again, point for comfort goes to the Simpson. Now, as far as the weight of the helmets, we're going to go ahead and just weigh these things right now behind the camera. And I have probably not the most accurate guys because this was back in my fitness days when I was weighing my meals and stuff. Like, I ain't about that life no more. <laughs> Way too much effort to, obviously, as you could tell, didn't really work too well. But we're gonna go ahead and weigh these out on my food scale. Let me make sure this thing is zeroed out for you guys. All zeroed. And also to keep in mind, these numbers are gonna be heavier than normal because I do have the Cardo Pack Talk Bold on here with the JBL speakers inside. So the helmets are gonna be a little bit heavier 
than if you just get it right out the box. But I'm gonna make sure I have both set up the exact same. So the weight is gonna be the same. Let's weigh out our Rorock Atlas core and not drop the helmet anywhere. So this one is coming in at 3.9 pounds. Take out the Cardo and the JVL speakers. You're talking that helmet is darn near like almost three or below, right? Super lightweight helmet. And that's probably from the aerospace grade carbon fiber that they talk about. Three pounds, nine ounces with the Rorock. Now let's weigh our Simpson, but before we do so, let's almost messed up guys. Let's move this Cardo Pack Talk Bold over to my Simpson Outlaw Bandit. This has been a lifesaver. I'm, I need to do a video on the Cardo Pack Talk Bold. I got two other base plates actually because I ride with my kids a lot and I like to be able to talk to them as I ride. And I wanted to you know, have a quick you know, interchange between helmet to helmet because everybody in my family has different size heads. And the base plates made it super easy to move the Cardo from helmet to helmet. So. I owe you guys a video of the Cardo Pack Talk and what I like about that. Kind of like a long-term review because I've had it for a while. But let's weigh the Simpson before I get off on a tangent. What are we looking at? Four pounds, three ounces. So the Rorock is 3.9. The Simpson is four pounds, three ounces. Whoa, almost lost the helmet. <laughs> so I will give the weight point to Rorock, of course, because it's a little bit lighter. Now, keep in mind, both of these do have the Cardo Pack Talks, and also I have two mics in this, no mic actually in this one, um, but it's as close as we could get it, guys. I'm not gonna take everything out to fight and get it all back in there. So point for weight goes to Rorock. Now let's talk about visor replacement. If you're looking at the Simpson Outlaw Bandit, as you guys could kind of see, hopefully again, that camera wants to focus on that, but this is something that you're gonna to have to carry around a flat-headed screwdriver in order to replace your visor. Neither one of these helmets have the ability to have an internal visor at all. So if you're one of those people that kind of ride daylight and nighttime hours, you're gonna end up having to change out your visor, right? In the middle of your ride or just carry a pair of, you know, iPro uh, in your bag or something that I, like I do and throw those on there. But then uh, of course, you're gonna to have to rock with your visor up. So if you want to keep your visor down, you're gonna to have to replace your visor going into the nighttime hours. Simpson, like I said, you need a flat-headed screwdriver. Rorock Atlas Core, this is the 1.0, so it doesn't have it. This one needed like a special tool to do it, so these two helmets would be about the same. However, like I said, we're doing the 2.0 version of the Rorock, and they changed it to do a thumbless replacement screw, which is so much easier to change your visors on the fly. Now, the detents of each of these visors, I would say, because I haven't really played with the 2.0 much. The 1.0, as you guys can see that right there, this is like none. Um, but I'll, I'll lean on my, my buddy, John Maxwell. I have put my hands on a 2.0 and played with the visors. Feels really close to what this Simpson does as well. So that would be about a wash between each helmet. However, with the thumbless screws, I will give the visor mechanism and replacement point to Rorock. And the sixth battle between the helmets is we're going to be talking about the Bluetooth communicator because I just think like this is something that more and more people are doing and I've had a few questions on the channel and through Instagram people were asking me like hey how'd you mount your Cardo to your Outlaw Bandit because it doesn't have any you know internal area for your speakers but uh, I was able to do so and I would say you know as far as mounting a Bluetooth communicator to either one of these helmets between the Simpson or the Rorock is, I would say the Simpson was much easier actually. Now Rorock does have a cutout inside the helmet to fit your speakers. However, if you guys could see here, I had to 3M strip the Cardo Pack Talk to the side of the helmet because running like your actual clip doesn't necessarily work too well with the gasket around the bottom of the helmet. And I didn't want to cut or do anything here. And I mean, it looks good, it's clean, it definitely is clean. But uh, I've also had to replace that a few times because it gets, you know, it's kind of wedged in there and it starts to come off. Although it has the cutouts inside of the, the helmet, I feel like maybe that's where I'm kind of getting that hot spot on my ears. With the Simpson, I had to get a little bit creative on inside mounting of the JBL speakers. They're a little bit thicker than your normal, you know, Bluetooth communicator speakers. I'm able to utilize that clip and it makes mounting it so much easier. I mean, you could have this thing thrown on there um, 
in less than like 15, 20 minutes and be on, on your way. And the other thing too with the Bluetooth communicator on the Rorock is partly because this one is a little bit closer to my face. The 2.0 is a little bit further away from your chin, I heard, but on here, it's so close. I feel like when I'm talking, I'm like licking the microphone for my communicator. Now I could probably change where it's at, but it's just, yeah. Mounting a Bluetooth communicator, I would say it was easier with my Simpson compared to my Rorock. Now, Rorock does have the shockwave that you could get for it, but that's just for phone calls and music, I think. Maybe just music, I don't know. It's, it's not rider to rider, so until they change that, this point goes to Simpson. And last but not least, probably the most discussed, most questioned, is talking about noise level and aerodynamics of the helmet. Now, both of these helmets, guys, these aren't gonna be a quiet helmet. If you're looking for a quiet helmet, you probably wanna look at like a Showy or an Arai. I haven't rode one of those in years, but Showy are extremely quiet compared to either of these helmets. Now, I would say this one, I feel is louder than the Rurok as far as noise level goes and everything. And partly is because this one, I cannot close those vents up front. So that adds some, and then I get a lot more whistle on here than I do in my Rurok Atlas Core. The Atlas Core has the ability to open and close this front vent. On the 2.0, I believe they did a little bit of an adjustment for their venting to kind of cut down the wind noise as well. With the 1.0 still, compared to the Simpson, I would say the Atlas is much quieter of a helmet than Simpson. Both still are noisy, so if you're doing long distance rides or something, you might wanna have some earplugs in your ears or else by the time you get to where you're at, you're either gonna have a headache or you're not gonna be able to hear for the next hour or so. <laughs> but yeah, wind noise, I would say the Rorox quieter. Also, the aerodynamics of either of these helmets, I would say both of them are kind of, you know, a little bit different with that stub nose, that Bane Predator look. It's not gonna be as aerodynamic as some of those like race brand helmets like your Showy, your Arise. Um, but the Rorock seems like it's stuck to your head a lot better when you're doing your, your shoulder checks, making sure no one's there before you do a lane change or if you're on the interstate for a long distance, it's not getting any sort of air lift. Now on Simpsons website, they do talk about that they have like a anti-lift design to this helmet and it does work, but I feel like when I'm on the interstate doing about 65 to 75 miles an hour, this one starts to kind of get me a little bit of a lift if I'm doing my shoulder checks on the interstate. This one, I could turn my head and doesn't even feel like I'm moving my head from behind my Memphis Shades Road Warrior fairing. So I will say this final point goes to Rurock, which makes it that this race was really close, guys. And, and again, it's all just my preference, right? But here on the channel, I try to do as many videos that could be beneficial for you guys because that's how I purchase things. I hop online and I watch YouTube video after YouTube video before I make the decision of purchasing something. And I'm not much of a tech spec person, so I apologize for that. But I like to give you, you know, my opinion of these. I'm not sponsored. Simpson, Rorock, they don't even know who the heck I am. But I like to create some of these videos to add some sort of value to your guys' you know, journey of what you're looking at getting for your, either your bike or, or your gear. So if you guys like today's video, be sure to click that like icon. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button right here. And if you'd rather stick around and watch a few more of my videos, I will throw up a video here and here. Like always, guys, I really appreciate your support. Thanks for tuning in to another video. And this is Motosart signing out. Oh, work, work, work.